Hi, Digital Tools students. I wanted to give you a brief overview over uh, your first project, your real project, where you're actually going to design and uh, create a product. Uh, yeah, every week we're going to create something new. You're going to use a new software application. So I hope you're pretty resourceful on your ability to find uh, videos. I can certainly direct you to, to some degree, but uh, I need you to be resourceful and because uh, there's a host of poss uh, resources out there for you uh, regarding Word and, and uh, Excel and the Adobe Creative Suite. So you need to take advantage of all of those. Let me just go over this assignment with you real quickly. Uh, you can see it printed in front of you uh, in your blackboard shell, but let me just to go over if it helps to kind of hear this articulated in a slightly different way, even through video. You're going to create a one-page document. Now, this is probably nothing unusual for you, right? I mean, you've created English compositions, you've created reports at other classes, but we're going to look at this a bit differently. The only thing I ask is that you find a topic that has the, the idea of design in it. I don't care if it's architectural design, graphic design, uh, as you can see from a sample that I'm going to show you, I used biomimicry as a subject matter. Uh, follow the criteria in your handout or in your uh, assignment sheet. It says specifications. It must be vertical in format and it must be legal size. So you'll go up to your Microsoft Word, you'll create a new document and it needs to be those two things. Uh, legal size, which is 8.5 by 14, a bit taller, so it's a little more awkward to design for. But it also gives us a little more real estate, if you will, to work with our composition. Uh, you can use a full range of colors. I really don't care about you swiping the content. The idea, this is a commercial, this isn't a commercial enterprise, this is an educational exercise. So uh, don't feel like you've got to have original content. I want you to actually uh, get a, an article with a couple of images for, just for you to use. If the images don't correspond real well and they're not high enough resolution, then find some other images online to, to incorporate in your document. If you don't know how to do any of these, then you really need to get up to speed by watching some tutorials about basic Microsoft Word. And I think I provide a link to at least one source, but there's literally thousands. Plenty of YouTube videos as well. So before I eat up too much more time, let me give you a, a couple of uh, warnings. I want you to avoid the following things. This is also in your project description. I don't want you to use a template. Yeah, you can find templates in Microsoft Word itself. If you want to look at templates and see how they arrange some columns, uh, you can certainly learn a lot by looking at templates, but I don't want you to use one and then to modify it. I want you to kind of build this from scratch. Uh, I don't want you to, as a young designer or a first time considering yourself as a designer per se, I don't want you to uh, err on the side of making too many font selections. I don't care about fancy fonts, if they got curly cues on them, if it looks like old English, it looks like it was off a Frankenstein movie, that could mean nothing to me. What means something to me is that you're using readable, legible, handsome type, and there's a definite hierarchy that there's a headline, there's some subheadings, there's body copy, and if you have a photo caption under a photo, then usually that's very small, but it needs to be readable. I would suggest that you use one typeface maybe use two. Uh, certainly you could color those a bit differently. Uh, don't overuse boxes and lines. Uh, a lot of beginning designers, because that's what these tools do, they make boxes and squares and circles really well. And you can fill them with gradients, and you can put drop shadows. That doesn't impress me the, the least little bit because that's just what the machine does. I want you to, now you could use these elements tastefully here and there, but be careful. Those uh, don't necessarily make for a good design. Uh, do not stretch type. I don't know if that'll be a problem in Word or not. Uh, you can stretch images. For example, if you've got a square image and you're trying to run it across the header and you just stretch it, well, what have you done? You just distorted and lost the integrity of that piece of artwork or that type or whatever it was. So just scale your things, uh, your images proportionally. Crop them if you need to. Here again, if you don't know how to crop, Google Crop Microsoft Word. Uh, it's pretty easy stuff. Uh, but you've just got to step through that. I don't have enough space or time in a, a nine-week course shell to show you every little intricacy that's going to come along. Feel free to ask questions, uh, but my first response is to you. Is you could not find that online, uh, I'll certainly give you uh, uh, some uh, intelligent and, and reasonable answers to your questions, but I do encourage you to, to search out online. This is higher education. I mean, you can, you can do that rather easily. I don't want images that are pixelated, low resolution. Let's say you're talking about the design of a logo. You found an article about logo design. 
and you found a, an example of a McDonald's logo, and it was a little tiny picture you found online about the size of a poacher's stamp, and you want to cover your whole background with it. Well, that's not going to work. It's going to be so pixelated that it looks like a chunky monkey, if you will. It just looks uh, sorry and sad. We want it to be fine resolution. Typically, elements on, images online are 72 uh, pixels per inch, which is really below standard for printing purposes, and we are going to print. Uh, of course, I don't want typographical errors and, uh, and, and grammar errors, but if you're, you're swiping this text from a, a responsible source, kind of pre read that. And sometimes when you cut and paste, funny things happen, so avoid those things too. Look at the musts and the specifications in your assignment. Follow those to a T, because that's what I'll use to evaluate uh, your ability to, to follow the guidelines you're given, but also your ability to... Uh, design. Now I want to show you, uh, I'm going to segue over to what a, an end product might look like before and afterwards. I imagine you're going to find a, a product, a, a project online, a, an article, and you're just going to cut and paste it into Word. The best way to do that is to go paste special or paste as unformatted and just let it fill in there. It'll just flow. It'll look ugly. It may not have paragraph breaks, but you can come back and correct that later. We just don't want any of that stylization from the website. A website has a whole bunch of pre-formatting and web co code, HTML, built into it and CSS, so it's best to paste it as unformatted. You'll see that happen. It's okay if you struggle with it because I expect that to be part of the learning process. Follow the guidelines and then you're going to have something that looks somewhat like what you're going to see on the screen now. I want you to have multiple columns, two at least. I want you to have a pull quote. I want you to use a, an insert a text box. That pull quote that you use might very well be a text box that doesn't have a border that's showing. Uh, and by the way, if you want images to go in the background, that has to do with text wrap. And when you go to your uh, edit, anytime you want to edit text or an image that you have on the, the page, you're going to right click on it for a Mac. You know, that is a control click for your PC. Same thing, control, uh, or you can right click. Uh, you're going to create a drop cap or a raised cap. If you don't know how to do that, what I would suggest is Microsoft Word, drop cap. Google that and see if you can't find out. If you have troubles beyond that, by all means, ask. I just want to be as responsive as I can. I'm not sure if, uh, if you give me a 10-hour notice before the assignment's due, I may not be able to get to you and help you. All right. Uh, the 300 DPI resolutions, we really haven't got into Photoshop. So what I would suggest, you know, so you can convert these things to 300 DPI, make sure, just find images that are larger. Let's say you had a little picture of a goldfish and it's this big, but you want it to be this big. Don't just stretch it out. Uh, find another picture that's kind of synonymous with this one that's larger. And you can tell if you go to an image search, you can see if it says it's 300 pixels wide or it's 3,000 pixels wide. The larger the image, Obviously, the higher resolution it's going to be for you to handle. Okay. Well, good luck with this. By all means, email me with questions, but certainly uh, uh, Google, Google, Google. I hate to just uh, be a, a supporter, a proponent of that particular brand, but whether you're using Bing or some other search engine, just find yourself uh, resources and YouTubes. And hey, in fact, share those with each other. You certainly can. There's a place uh, in your discussion mode that you can actually just uh, have private discussions between students if you guys find some. In fact, I would love to know if you've got additional resources besides what I provide. All right. Don't forget to, to meet the assignment by the deadline. If you want me to look at something before you turn it in, if you give me ample time, I'd be glad to give you some response. In the end, as always, every week, the following week, we will look back at each other's work. And you can kind of critique and see how my critique went. And the idea is that it won't be perfect. The idea is that you will kind of struggle along the way. And then as it gets towards the end of the course, you will get to revisit each one of these assignments. Let's say, for example, let's, you, you did an average grade on one because maybe it had some typography suggestions or maybe the way you handled some uh, an image w could be done more uh, excitingly uh, or aesthetically. Uh, I'll give you that suggestion, you know, and then you can actually follow that uh, suggestion uh, with the final portfolio. And sort of that final por por portfolio should have plenty of feedback for you to do really, really well on. Well, good luck and uh, look forward to seeing your work very soon.